California started pumping a million gallons of salt water from the Pacific Ocean. Result is insane. Every time the dry season returns, California sinks into a scenario so familiar that everyone knows it by heart. Cracked earth, scorching sunlight, and farmers staring helplessly at their withering fields. Nothing has changed. It's still the same drought, still the same uninvited guest that leaves the land thirsty and forces people to learn how to endure. Meanwhile, the California government sits back at the table scratching their heads trying to come up with a new solution as if they hadn't been doing exactly that for years. Uh, this year, I think the concern is that, um, you know, we have this problem going on again and we're not doing enough about it. But this time, something strange was dropped into the depths of Lake Lasis, near Calabasas. A metal barrel. Sounds unimpressive, right? Just a barrel. But they say it could save the entire state of California from its endless thirst. That barrel, believe it or not, might let people drink water straight from the bottom of the ocean. Crazy? Absolutely. But it's real. So how exactly can people turn salty seawater into fresh drinking water without building massive plants or spending billions of dollars? Set your skepticism aside for a moment because this story is only just beginning. First, take a look back at Lake Oroville, California's famous drought barometer. Just by glancing at its water level, you can tell whether the state is thirsty or not. Weather forecasts almost feel redundant at this point. In 2015, the lake's water dropped to just 39% of its normal level. People stood on the shore, staring down at the cracked lake bed, feeling as if they were looking at their own future, dry, depleted, and hopeless. California, a land of wealth and glamour where you can buy million dollar homes but still count every drop of dishwater. And right there, amid those dying reservoirs, a miracle barrel was lowered, carrying hope, or at least a story wild enough to make people believe that miracles might still exist. Maybe. Picture yourself standing before Lake Oroville, once vast and majestic, a shimmering mirror of California, now reduced to a thin, lifeless ribbon of water, lost among sunburnt cracks of desert earth. By 2021, the scene repeated itself, only worse. Water levels sank to just 35%, forcing the Hyatt power plant to shut down because, quite simply, there wasn't enough water left to spin the turbine. But first, the reach of the drought emergency. Scott Rates has a shocking look at the parched predicament as Lake Oroville drains to dirt. California, once proud of its clean energy, now finds itself losing power because it's dry. Sounds like a joke, but it's true. Yet the blackouts weren't even the worst part. During the brutal six-year drought from 2011 to 2017, the state lost over 102 million trees, with 62 million dying in 2016 alone. Forests that once offered endless shade are now nothing but charred stumps like a graveyard of nature itself. It might be hard to tell, but right now I'm standing on the bottom of Folsom Lake. This year's historic drought so bad that many lakes and reservoirs in California are dropping well below 30%, and in some cases, revealing islands they've never seen before. So what about agriculture? The once endless fields of the Central Valley have turned into cracked wastelands. Hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland once the food basket of America have become a desert. And as always, when nature lashes out, people are told to sacrifice a little. In 2015, Governor Jerry Brown ordered a 25% cut in water use. By 2021, Gavin Newsom called for another 15% reduction, which means Californians, the people paying the highest taxes in the nation, are now encouraged to shower less, water their plants less, wash their cars less, and, if possible, drink a little less too. Cutting back on car washes or lawn watering might be tolerable, but cutting water for drinking and bathing is a nightmare. And for California, that nightmare keeps coming back like a rerun that never ends. Each drought is another alarm bell ringing across the state, from the parched farms of the Central Valley to the sun-soaked mansions of Malibu. Ironically, Saudi Arabia and Israel, places that almost never see rain, manage to live comfortably thanks to desalination technology. So what about California, a state with more than 839 miles of coastline, surrounded by the vast Pacific Ocean, and yet still thirsty? It sounds like nature's cruel joke, but in fact, 
California has already begun doing something about it. Today, the state operates 11 desalination plants. The most famous is the Claude Bud Lewis plant in Carlsbad, a near symbol of the effort to drink seawater without dying of thirst. The story began back in 1993 after a five-year drought. The decision was made to build the plant as a savior for the future. It took more than two decades, and by 2015, right in the middle of another historic drought, the project was finally completed. Today, the Carlsbad plant pumps around 100 million gallons of seawater per day, using reverse osmosis technology to produce 50 million gallons of fresh water, roughly 10% of the drinking supply, for millions of local residents. No reliance on rain, no need to pray for better weather. No matter how dry it gets, Carlsbad keeps running steadily like a tireless machine, turning salt water into fresh water, a substance that, in California, can sometimes feel more precious than gold. Sounds like a technological miracle, doesn't it? But of course, every miracle comes with a price. And for Carlsbad, that price isn't small. Money, energy, and the environment. At first glance, Carlsbad looks like the hero of the drought era. A miraculous machine reaching deep into the ocean to pull up precious drops of fresh water and save California. But behind that technological miracle hides a giant beast, one that devours money, electricity, and the hopes of the thirsty. Carlsbad alone consumes 3.6 kilowatt hours of electricity to produce just 260 gallons of fresh water. In total, it burns through about 36 megawatts of continuous power every day, enough to supply electricity to 28,500 homes. And that's just the power bill. Add maintenance, labor, chemicals, pipelines, filters, and the plant swallows between $49 and $59 million every year just to stay running. Don't forget, construction alone costs a staggering $1 billion, a number that could make any almond farmer's knees buckle. You might think, well, it's expensive, but worth it, as long as there's water to drink. Sounds reasonable until you find out who's paying for it. Yes, it's you, the consumer. Here's an easier way to picture it. Farmers in California's Central Valley Project can buy 317,000 gallons of water for just $31 to $174, enough to refresh an entire field. But water from the Carlsbad plant? For the same amount, it costs about $2,100, basically like buying Evian, Ocean Edition, not irrigation water. That's at least 12 times more expensive if anyone dared to irrigate almond trees with desalinated water, they'd spend about $8,400 per acre, while earning only around $3,300 from that acre. The only result of that equation? Bankruptcy. And that's still not the worst part. Every day, the Carlsbad plant sucks in 100 million gallons of seawater, but only half becomes fresh water. The rest turns into brine, a super salty waste that's twice as dense as seawater. It sinks to the seafloor, spreads along the coast, and gradually drains oxygen from the water, making it impossible for marine life to survive. Carlsbad has tried to reduce the damage by diluting the brine with discharge from the nearby Encina power plant before releasing it back into the ocean. But since that power plant shut down, even that mitigation has become far more difficult. But not every desalination plant is that considerate. Many others simply dump their thick, salty brine straight into the ocean without a second thought. The result? Expanding dead zones on the seafloor, places with no fish, no algae, no oxygen. And if you think that's the only problem keeping ecologists up at night, think again. Even during water intake, desalination plants can suck in fish eggs, larvae, and plankton. In simple terms, today's desalination technology is like trying to save a sinking ship by drilling more holes in it. Yet amid this grim picture, a small spark of hope has emerged from a quiet metal barrel resting at the bottom of Los Virgenes Reservoir, near the village of Westlake. In March 2025, California engineers tested something unusual. They lowered a capsule, shaped like a steel drum, to the bottom of the lake. A few hours later, they pumped water up, poured it into a glass, and drank it. And the miracle? The water was perfectly pure. Of course, everyone knew, Making fresh water from a freshwater lake isn't impressive, but this experiment was just the first step, a rehearsal for something far more ambitious, to deploy ocean well capsules deep in the ocean, more than 1,300 feet below the surface, 
to turn seawater into drinking water right there on the seafloor. And it's at that crushing depth where natural pressure can bend steel that ocean well found its answer. Because in the very place where humans can't survive, the ocean itself might just help us live. Today, most desalination plants use reverse osmosis, a process that sounds like cutting edge science, but at its core, it's fairly simple. Seawater is forced through an ultra-fine membrane that lets only pure water molecules pass, while blocking salt, sand, microbes, and other impurities on the other side. The result? Fresh, crystal clear, drinkable water. It sounds straightforward, but the problem lies in the pressure required. Forcing water through that membrane takes an enormous amount of force, around 55 to 70 bar, equivalent to the weight of a giant whale pressing down on every square centimeter. And this is where Ocean Well steps in, not on land, but at the bottom of the ocean. They plan to place desalination capsules more than 1,300 feet deep, where the natural water pressure already reaches about 40 bar. In other words, the ocean itself provides more than half the pressure needed to push the salt out of seawater. Thanks to that, the amount of human energy required drops by up to 40% compared to traditional desalination plants. To visualize it, an air conditioner uses about 47 kilowatt hours per day, a water heater, around 14 kilowatt hours, a refrigerator, roughly five kilowatt hours. Meanwhile, a single ocean well capsule needs just two kilowatt hours to produce 260 gallons of pure drinking water. That's right, less energy, more water, and no massive onshore facility required. And there's more. The water filtered from the ocean's depths is naturally cold, so Ocean Well proposes using the temperature difference to recycle energy, creating a double saving loop that's both eco-friendly and efficient. Of course, installing an entire filtration system 1,312 feet below the ocean's surface sounds a bit daring. Extreme pressure, total darkness, freezing temperatures, everything down there screams danger. But Ocean Well insists, there's nothing to worry about. According to the company, the water produced deep under the sea is clean enough to pour straight into a glass and drink. Inside the capsule, everything, salt, bacteria, viruses, pesticides, and even microplastics gets trapped in the filtration layer. And in fact, at 1,300 feet below, seawater is already far purer than the surface, which is often filled with debris, oil, and plankton. In other words, the deep ocean has already done a first round of filtering for humanity. As for the biggest concern among ecologists, the brine discharge, Ocean Well has addressed that too. Instead of releasing thick, concentrated waste, each capsule emits water that's only about 5% saltier than the surrounding sea. Even better, this discharge exits from nozzles on top of the capsule, allowing it to mix quickly with ocean currents dispersing evenly instead of settling on the seafloor. Still, it's worth noting that the test only took place 49 feet underwater, while the real plan is to deploy the capsules more than 1,300 feet deep in an environment far harsher and less forgiving. And then comes the most practical question of all. How do you maintain something down there? That's the part where Ocean Well doesn't really have a clear answer yet. There's no official information on how long maintenance would take, how much it would cost, or how they'd keep the system running smoothly under such crushing pressure. In traditional desalination plants, filters need to be cleaned every three to six months, depending on water quality. But on the ocean floor, even replacing a single membrane could be an expensive, complicated operation. And then comes the biggest question everyone's asking. What's its real efficiency? That's the ultimate test, because if these capsules can truly produce enough water to sustain a city, then California's future might just become sweeter than ever. According to official information on Ocean Well's website, each undersea capsule can produce nearly 1 million gallons of fresh water per day. If that number doesn't impress you, imagine this. They could build an entire freshwater farm beneath the ocean. And the crazy idea doesn't stop there. Ocean Well plans to cover a section of seabed near a coastal town, aiming for a total output of 58 million gallons of drinking water per day, 
enough to supply an entire major California city. For now, the project is still in its testing phase. Engineers have already lowered a prototype capsule to the bottom of Las Virgenes Reservoir, collecting data on performance, pressure, water flow, and purity. The results were convincing enough for Oceanwell to invite investors and senior officials to witness it firsthand. Proof that this is no longer just a 3D concept video, but a real working system. According to the company's timeline, the first open ocean pilot will launch this year, about five miles off the Gulf of Mexico. If that trial succeeds, the capsules will head to Hawaii in 2026 for large-scale expansion. And by 2028, Oceanwell plans to return to California, launching the state's first underwater desalination farm a massive field spread across the Pacific seafloor where each capsule silently works to quench the thirst of millions. If everything goes according to plan, by the end of this decade, Californians may look out toward the coast and see a vision never before imagined. The floating buoys you saw in the video aren't submarines or some sci-fi gadget. They're the latest invention from Anka Technologies, a company quietly working to quench California's thirst without massive plants, pipelines, or billion-dollar power bills like Carlsbad's. Unlike Oceanwell, whose capsules sit deep on the ocean floor and rely on natural pressure, Anka harnesses the power of waves. They've created self-powered desalination buoys anchored to the seabed, and every time a wave rolls by, it's enough to make them produce fresh water. No electricity, no fuel. As waves pass, each buoy captures that oscillating motion and converts it into mechanical energy drawing seawater into a reverse osmosis system built inside its body. The salt water is pushed through the filters, turning into clean, drinkable water that's pumped ashore through underwater pipes. Solar panels on top of the buoys provide extra backup power, keeping the system running even on calm days. However, only one quarter of the intake becomes drinking water. That might sound inefficient, but it's by design. This way, Anka avoids producing thick, salty brine that kills marine life around traditional desalination plants. The remaining three quarters of water mixes with the waste stream, diluting it before being released back into the sea. To be fair, Oceanwell still has the environmental edge. Its brine is only 5% saltier than normal seawater, while Anka's discharge is about 30% higher in salinity. Still, compared to land-based desalination facilities that release fish-killing brine, Anka's method is a massive step forward, and the innovation doesn't stop there. The prototype buoy itself is made entirely from 107,000 recycled plastic bottles, fished out of the very ocean it's trying to save, a literal symbol of turning waste into hope. Of course, the output is modest, about 14,000 gallons of fresh water per day. Compared to Carlsbad's 50 million gallons a day, Matching that output would require more than 3,500 buoys floating together, a veritable forest of buoys off the California coast. But in an era of worsening droughts, even small, modular ideas like this deserve serious attention. Because as humanity struggles to claim every drop it can from nature, maybe it's time we learn to drink water powered by waves, not electricity. Both Ocean Well and Anka Technologies are writing a new chapter for California, a place where the first drops of fresh water no longer fall from the clouds, but rise from the heart of the ocean. If you found this story fascinating and want to explore more crazy but true innovations like this one, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss a video.